Okay, this week we're going to be talking about simple harmonic motion and the anatomy of a wave. So I want you to take out Cornell Notebook, go ahead and start a new topic, and take down these learning targets. These are some definitions that I don't want you to take down right now. You're going to be doing writing these down for one of your homework assignments. But we're going to be talking about each one in this video. So let's first just look at a wave, and I'm going to go ahead and define some of those terms. The crest of a wave is the topmost point of the wave. So this is a crest, that's a crest, so is that. The trough is the lowest point of the wave. It's going to be this point, this point, and this point. Amplitude is going to be measured from either the equilibrium point, this middle line, up to a crest, or from the equilibrium point down to a trough. Both of those are the amplitude. Not the measurement from crest down to trough. It is not this whole length here. It is the length from the equilibrium point either up to a crest or down to a trough. Wavelength is going to be uh, the literal length of the wave. It's pretty straightforward in a, what wavelength means. So if this line represents my x-axis and it's in distance, so in meters, wavelength is going to be measured from one crest to the next crest, and its units are going to be meters. Period is similar to wavelength because it covers from one crest to another crest, but now instead of the x-axis being distance, it's now time. So if the x-axis is time, then from one crest to the next crest, that's going to be our period, and it's going to be have the units of seconds. So what is a period exactly? It's going to be the length of time it takes for one wavelength to pass by a given point in space. So it might take two seconds for a full wave to pass by a given point, or the period would be two seconds. Frequency is probably more familiar to you. Frequency is going to be measured in hertz, and it's the number of wavelengths that pass by a given point every second. Most waves that we're going to be talking about move very, very fast, so it's better to measure how many wavelengths pass by in one second rather than how long it takes one wave to go by. And the equation, if you are given the period, you can find um, the frequency by doing 1 over t, or if you have the frequency, you can find the period by doing 1 over f. Uh, this is interchangeable here. Here are some other definitions I want you to go ahead and write down. Uh, an oscillator is anything that moves back and forth or increases or decreases. So a wave is an oscillator because it increases and decreases. It goes back and forth. A pendulum swings back and forth. That's an example of an oscillator. A mass on a spring. If I pull a mass that's attached to a spring, is going to go back and forth. Restoring force is the force that makes, if I'm talking about a mass on the spring, it's going to make that mass want to go back to equilibrium. It's the force that is causing it to come back to equilibrium. And a simple harmonic oscillator is one that has a restoring force proportional to the amount of displacement. And what that really just means is that our equation is going to be really easy. So Hooke's law is our spring equation for force, and so our restoring force is going to be equal to negative k, so our spring constant, times our displacement. So if I pull this mass over one meter, and maybe it's going to experience a force of five newtons going back towards equilibrium. If I pull it two meters, now it's going to experience 10 uh, newtons going this way. So it is this direct relationship or indirect relationship. And we're going to see how we end up using sine and cosine. So I'm not going to mention it quite yet, but we use sine and cosine in our equations for a wave. There is going to be, so the restoring force wants to get the mass back to equilibrium. However, if you know anything about a mass on a spring or maybe a pendulum, you know that it doesn't just stop at equilibrium. So why doesn't it stop at equilibrium? And the reason is that the restoring force is fighting with inertia. So the restoring force is bringing it back to equilibrium, but once it gets here, it has a lot of inertia, and that inertia is going to carry it forward until it eventually is stopped here, and then it's going to be pushed back this way. So at equilibrium, we're going to have the mass have the most speed at that time. Our restoring force at equilibrium is actually going to be zero, and our maximum force or restoring force is going to be at our maximum displacement and our velocity at this point is going to be zero, and our acceleration is going to be at, at its maximum.